So I, I, have a, I have a question about that, and you write very candidly about your marriage um, in the book. But first, um, and you're you are not particularly critical. Uh, of Trump in the book, but you are critical and candid of some of the other people you worked with, most notably, or among the notable ones, Jared Kushner. Um, and his overly large portfolio was a punchline in Washington that was written about, but I want to just read a, a brief bit that you wrote about him in your book. You wrote, if Martian attacks had come across the radar, he would have happily added them to his ever bulging portfolio. He misread the Constitution in one crucial respect thinking that all power not given to the federal government was reserved to him. Do you think it was a mistake for Trump to make him a senior advisor and bring him into the White House? Look, Jared Kushner is very smart. He's highly intelligent. His heart was in the right place to help the country. But it's fraught to have um, your family in the White House. For President Trump, though, this was natural. I mean, that was a, the Trump organization is a true family business. Jared is his son-in-law, of course, not his child, not his kid. but. The other adult children, Ivanka, Don Jr. and Eric, all got out of college and I think almost immediately started working at the Trump Organization and did very well there, became experts in real estate development, The Apprentice. And I remember seeing a quote from Don Jr. at some point in early 2016, I believe it was maybe 2015, actually, where he said, look, we've just always adapted and learned a new family business. We do real estate, then we had to do TV. And he said, and now we're learning politics. And so it is a true family business for President Trump. And he's a great father. Uh, who's raised wonderful kids, uh, adult kids, and um, a teenager. And I think that that was natural for him. The problem is this. If your family, the outside world, members of Congress, media, and then the inside world, other colleagues in the White House, don't, can't, don't feel comfortable questioning what you say. So you've got all this authority, very little accountability, and then there's this huge gulf in between the two. So I think Jared is very talented and could have worked on certain things, but he got involved in almost everything. And that's everything from trying to help to meddling. And then he gets to pick and choose his, not just his portfolio, but now his legacy. He doesn't want anybody to remember that he is responsible for the politics of the Midwest not going well in 2020. He just wants you to remember him for peace in the Mideast. He doesn't want you to remember this wrong-headed immigration, fair, full and fair immigration, merit-based immigration reform plan he came up with in the Rose Garden uh, that didn't go anywhere in Congress. He wants you to remember him for criminal justice reform. And like I said, he did certain things very well. I think he is somebody who absolutely takes the credit for things that other people did too, but that's okay. But he should give the credit to the president and the vice president. Their names are actually on the ballot. And I was just raised in a way where I'm respectful to authority and deferential at times. And I believe that um, the president, the vice president had their names on the ballot. So they're really the, the driving force. We'll see what he says in his book that's coming out this, this summer. But I, I would suspect as many of his former colleagues in the White House and administration suspect is that he's going to take credit for many things that were also brought forth by Senate confirmed cabinet secretaries, by the president himself, by other senior staffers. Look, if you were a junior staffer, and Jared Kushner said, that's on hold, that doesn't serve the president, that's not a good idea, who told you to do that? Months of work could just be unraveled and, and, and be temporarily and eventually permanently put on hold. Also, I think it was very um, good uh, as, as a broad stroke idea for the Kushners to invite Democratic senators and members of Congress to their Calorama home to host them for dinners. But again, the, they're talking to them about issues that we have entire cabinet agencies and departments that handle. So it became confusing to them. And what, what did it do? I'm all for bipartisanship as a means, but not an end. And what did it really do? Every single Democratic senator who was invited there eventually went on to impeach Jared's father-in-law twice. So it sounds good hearted. It sounds, and Jared is just mean to me personally. And every woman watching this has had a colleague, particularly a male colleague or 10, who have tried to throw logs in their path who have gotten in their way, who have denied them and dismissed them and denigrated them. And in this White House, that was me for Jared. He just had it in for me. I think I, I look, I don't have an Ivy League degree. I grew up very modestly. We have very different backgrounds. I don't think he thought very highly of me many times. Plus, I had a gift that he lacks. I'm very good on TV. And his father-in-law <laughs> loved having me on TV as a messenger. And I think we all find out how hard it is to go on TV, Ashley, once we go on TV. So what was originally a compliment became a passive aggressive criticism. It's like, oh, she's good on TV, but but what? 
You have to know the policies. You have to have a relationship with the principals, the president. You have to know what's going. You have to consult with so many different people when this is happening. And um, and he made sure that I got nowhere near the 2020 campaign. He put his friend Brad Parscale in there. Height is not depth. And he made sure that everybody knew, including you at the Washington Post, Jared Kushner is in charge of the re-election campaign. Okay. Well, then hold him to account for the re-election campaign. 